former principal secretary to come uh, to the podium. And also I'm requesting our honorable Dean, Professor Tayyibur Rahman to come to the Dean, to the podium. As we all know, since 1948, 24th October has been celebrated as UN Day, marking the anniversary of the official establishment of the United Nations in 1945. And we in uh, independent university are taking this as a global day, particularly the global studies and governance program is celebrating as global day. And this is going to be the fifth of this series. Um, we all know today the urgency of all countries in the world to come together to fulfill the promise of the United uh, Nations has really been greater than any other time before. And for Bangladesh, one of the largest delta of the Bay of Bengal and a country often referred to as ground zero for climate change, this urgency calls for strong action and governance of resources at regional and global levels. With this promise, today, Three institutes, three organizations of independent university of Bangladesh joined together to celebrate this global day of 2021. Before going to in details, uh, may I uh, mention that we will have also the His Excellency, Mr. R. Miller, Honorable Ambassador of the United States of America in this session. While the His Excellency, Mr. Miller comes, We'll start our program, and as soon as he comes, we'll accommodate him in the program. Who are the institute who are involved in this program? As you know, Independent University of Bangladesh, founded in 1993, is one of the oldest private universities in Bangladesh, where academic excellence is a tradition. Teaching a passion and lifelong learning a habit. And within IUB, with the GSG, Global Studies and uh, Governance Program, is the first ever Global Studies and Governance Bachelor Program among all universities in Bangladesh. It is a holistic and timely field of study with a vision analyzing cross-border governance pragmatically and theoretically for a sustainable future. And another organization that joins today's event is the Center for Bay of Bengal Studies, is an integral part of independent university, Bangladesh. Uh, it is common, it comments its journey on 22nd November 2020 after approbation of the board of trustee of IUB. The center is dedicated to addressing inter alia environment, environmental, ecological, geopolitical, and geo strategic issues, as well as blue economy and coastal communities development uh, issues. And the third organization joins today's event is International Center for Climate Change and Development. It's an international research and capacity building training institution based in independent university Bangladesh since 2009. ICAR's mission is to generate and disseminate knowledge on climate change in Bangladesh with specific attention to capacitate future leaders on climate adaptation and development issues. So with this brief, brief introduction, uh, may I now uh, going to start the today's first session. We are having today's session divided in three sessions. The first session is titled as Governing Nature. And we have with us uh, our honorable guests. So now uh, to start this today's morning session that is Governing na na Nature, may I request to give welcome remarks by Professor Intiaj Hussain, Professor of Global Studies and Governance Program, Independent University, Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shanawaz. 
With your permission, Honorable Foreign Minister, Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador of the United States, and our esteemed Special Envoy, Climate Vulnerable Forum, our respected chairperson, ESTCDT, our respected Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dean, and here I have a little bit of a sad news for you. Um, one of our presenters, Deputy Director Haikat, Professor Mizan Khan, um, his sister passed away um, just this morning. I got to know of it less than an hour ago. May she rest in peace and let's give condolences to his family and him. But let me return to all of you my peers, colleagues, friends, students, and guests, welcome to this. 2021 is slated to be the hottest year on record. But that's what 2013 claimed to be. 2014 also said the same thing. 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Every year is claiming to be the hottest. We must do something about this. We owe it to the future generations that they never say this is the coldest year in their life. We must begin and we must begin with action plan. The day has been constructed in such a way that at the end of the day, we would like to have some kind of an action plan that we, the three sponsors and the university will begin to show we are leaders in this. SDG campaign. We are lucky to have ICAD with us. It is not only a pioneer, but a camp campaigner and also a policy making innovator. And we are extremely, uh, um, um, we are absolutely humbled to have someone of the stature of Professor Salim ul -Haq with us. More recently, we have had the Center for Bay of Bengal Studies under the able hands and truly sagacious mind of perhaps the doyen of the diplomatic community in Dhaka. And this is Ambassador Tariq Karim. I owe so much to him. Thank you for being here. Up to you, it depends on how we clean things out. Three of the world's five most polluted rivers drain into that bay. And then when we have monsoon, all the dirt from the Southern hemisphere comes here. So where are we? What can we do? It is through the sagacious ideas that ambassador and the center brings up that we can start cleaning up and show our leadership, especially with plastic. If after today, the vice chancellor mandates, we will not have any more plastic in IUB, it will be the biggest, most significant step Bangladesh will have taken. I challenge you. And global studies and governance. What can I say about it? It is very personal, but I have in front of me young faculty members. I have even younger students. They call themselves global gatekeepers. Let's check them out. They have been working relentlessly in everything that they do, and they need your support. Let me conclude by going back to some of our guests. I would like to basically just say that the IUB institution is ready to wage war on this beast, and we are going to win it through your efforts. The action plan begins today from tonight. I would like to thank the United States for re-entering the campaign, and especially to His Excellency, the Ambassador, who's the second consecutive US ambassador in Dhaka out of two to come to the independent university at the invitation of global studies. With the United States back, I hope one of the first countries it looks at is ground zero Bangladesh. We have problems everywhere and not far away right from here with the rivers. Your technological support would be immensely uh, appreciated. I would like to go to our esteemed um, special envoy and 
sir, we look up to you to give us the stewardship in this campaign. We have lots of students ready to come at your command to help you in every way that it can. And we faculty members are also there. Kindly call us up and we will be ready. And I would like to finish with the honorable foreign minister. Um, I have been in several panels with him, but honorable foreign minister, I don't know you personally. I know about you, and the one thing I like so much about you is that you epitomize one element of Bongo Bondhu, and that is the theme of friendship to all, malice to none. And therefore, we look upon you to guide us, and honorable foreign minister, I have in front of me very energetic younger faculty members as I slide into the sunset. I would like you to also keep tab of all our young students. They are your legacy. Please look after them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I now request our honorable provost chancellor Dr. Niaz Ahmed Khan. Uh, before I request that to come, may I briefly introduce him. Professor Dr. Niaz Ahmed Khan is the provost chancellor of the Independent University of Bangladesh and former chairman of Department of Development Studies, University of Dhaka. He's also senior academic advisor, National Defense College, senior academic advisor, uh, Black Institute of Governance and Development, BIGD, and chairman of Bangladesh Tropical Forest Conservation Foundation. He pursued higher education and research in the University of Oxford, University of Wales, Swansea, and Asian Institute of Technology. So may I now request our honorable provost chancellor to give his welcome uh, remarks, opening remarks. Thank you, Dr. Shanaz. Um, salam and good morning, um, all my friends and colleagues. We have been talking about sustainability for quite some time now. The initial impetus came from the milestone event, early 90s, 1992 to be precise, in the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. When this very term, sustainable development, was coined. Since then, much have been talked about, much been written, but unfortunately, the goal of sustainability, founding an equitable, sustainable world has remained as elusive as ever. And the challenges before us remains no less than when it began in the early 1990s. With that broader context, we have gathered here together to dwell on the questions of equity and sustainability. As you know, this year's UN Day, which we lovingly call the Global Day, the theme is equitable and sustainable world, striving towards building that kind of a moral world. We have been joined by some of the most respected dignitaries, the chief guest being the honorable foreign minister of the government of Bangladesh, his Excellency, Dr. Momen. He has been kind enough to send his messages, a video message to us and showed his solidarity to this initiative. We also have our guest of honors, His Excellency, Mr. Earl Miller, the US 
ambassador to Bangladesh, who is on his way, and his members of his entourage uh, have already joined, and thanks to them. We have the formal principal secretary, Mr. Abul Kalam Azad, a good friend of us, not just because he was the formal principal secretary, but because he has left a mark on consolidating the efforts of SDG achievements in this country. And we thank him for being with us uh, today. The other members of faculty of IUB, and I feel so proud when I talk about them, Professor Selimul Haq, Dr. Mizan Khan, and we have just heard about the family mishap that has happened to him. Our prayers goes to him and to his family. We have also our able guardian and leader, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Tanvir Hassan, architect Nilifar Jafrullah, our Honorable Chairman of the EST CDT, which is the patronizing organization for IUB. And of course, my colleagues and leaders of the three integral institutes and organs, pillars of this university, the Global Studies Department, led by Professor Imtiaz and his able colleagues, the Center for Bay of Bengal Studies, led by no less than a personality Dr. Uh, Ambassador Karim, Tariq Karim, and of course, the internationally deputed, the Center for Climate Change and Development based and housed, proudly housed, I would say, in the Independent University of Bangladesh, led by Professor Salimul Haq and his able team. And we also have our Dean of the Social Science Faculty, Professor Tayyubur Rahman with us. Now, this event is actually a combination of three major sessions. We have focused on three major dimensions that have particular relevance in terms of equity and sustainability in Bangladesh today. Bangladesh is actually braving to face these huge challenges. The first dimension is the link between sustainability and environment conservation, natural resource management. So if you like the link between sustainability and the broader ecology needs to be explored. And that's the first theme, the first theme of the first session. Then we move on to talk about the major challenge faced by Bangladesh in the arena of blue economy, which is an opportunity and also could, might as well be a missed opportunity if you are not acting judiciously. So it's important to explore those links. The third would be, how do you link between sustainability and governance? One thing is becoming gradually clear that there are major links and nexus between these two concepts, governance and sustainability. We haven't fared very well in the arena of governance. We have globally, as I said, failed to make much progress in terms of creating an equitable and sustainable world. Given this unaccomplished mission, we have so much to dwell on. We, are, we have so much to think about and talk about. And this is our modest effort from IUB to contribute to this broader academic challenge and discussion surrounding sustainability, equity, and governance. And we are truly pleased, friends and colleagues, that you have joined us. You have enriched IUB through your presence, especially the dignitaries. We remain deeply thankful for your kind presence. This has been a source of encouragement. Thank you very much. And once again, welcome to my university.
Thank you, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Niaz Ahmed Khan, for your kind remarks. Uh, as uh, Honorable Pro Vice mentioned, we have some changes in our schedule today. Our chief guest, His Excellency Dr. A.K. Abdul Momin, MP, Foreign Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, had to join some uh, emergency program uh, called by Honorable Prime Minister. So uh, he will not be able to join the, the session today, but um, Minister sent his uh, video and we'll play that one. Similarly, our, we will have a video message from Professor Salimul Haq, Director Center for uh, ICAT, Climate Change and uh, Development. So now uh, we'll have another opening remarks from Ms. Nilofar Jafrullah, uh, Chairman EST CD, T, Independent University. Ms. Nilofar Jafrullah is the founder trustee of Education Science, Technology and Culture Development Trust, the founding trust of Independent University Bangladesh and Chittagong Independent University. Ms. Jafrullah is also a pioneering businesswoman in the country who is currently holding the position of the chairman of Midland Bank Limited. An architect by profession, Ms. Nilfa Jafrullah has contributed to education and development sectors remarkably for more than 25 years. Ms. Nilfa Jafrullah was the member of the Bangladesh Parliament in the 9th and 10th Parliament. She also served as the chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh from 2012 to 2013 in the 9th Parliament. Uh, honorable trustee joining us uh, online. So we'll have uh, her, her online space. Thank you. Thank you. Distinguished uh, guest speakers, our vice chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, students, a very good morning to you all. At the inaugural session of Global Day 2021, organized by the institutes, concerned institutes at IUB, to commemorate UN Day. In in this world where we live, climate change is dramatically picking up speed. The nature which engulfs us in its comforts by making the world beautifully livable, do mankind realize or have they ever realized or relished its benevolence? Each year, weather extremes lead to reports of disasters that increase in volume, setting in to change living conditions from bad to worse, especially all around Bangladesh. Scarcity of water as rivers in other parts of the world, scarcity of water as rivers dry up due to lack of river rain, yeah. de deforestation lead to heat generation and rise in Earth's temperatures, causing ice to melt in ultimately, or will lead to ultimately. People all around the world have taken to the streets a global challenge to save our dear planet. This is better late than never, its situation, along with political action, which is a must to prevent continued global warming as climate protection concerns everybody in all sectors, status of lives, Climate disruptions do not disappear like any other crisis. It creates other crises. As in the case of the latest pandemic, human beings thriving on this polluted world were subject to combat the coronavirus with severe restraints. So as setting the course for climate protection arises, we have to jointly commit ourselves to decide on the future of our planet and that of the well-being of our future generation. During the pandemic, travel bans and sluggish world economy, greenhouse gas emissions, 
are recorded to drop 6% in 2020. Such, but as global economy begins to recover, emissions are expected to return to higher levels. Climate change is a global emergency that goes beyond political borders. Major shifts to accelerate climate critical condition that would slash mm -hmm. emissions and improve lives of millions of people can only assure to meet climate goals and the SDGs. In this regard, we have observed that in recent years to implement goal 13 of UN declared SDG, take action to combat climate change and its impact, concerned groups are globally working towards saving lives and livelihoods with urgent actions to address both the pandemic along with climate emergency. The Paris Agreement adopted in 2015 aims to, co aims to, I quote, strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change by keeping a global temperature rise this century well below two degrees Celsius, above pre-industrial level, I unquote. The agreement also aims to strengthen the ability to deal with the impacts of climate change through efficient and appropriate financial aid flows, a technology and enhanced capacity building framework within a technology and enhanced capacity building frame, frameworks. Sorry. All hands on deck, the clarion call to all humankind with awareness programs, training facilities for proper use of equipments and First and foremost, to forego the use of fossil fuel to generate energy for the use in industries or homes. Meanwhile, stay safe and well. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nilfa Jafurla, Honorable Chairman. STCDT, Independent University, Bangladesh. Distinguished guest, by the time we have with us His Excellency Mr. R. Miller, Ambassador of the United States of Bangladesh with us. Welcome, Honorable Ambassador. Uh, may I now request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Tanvir Hassan, uh, to give his well opening remarks Professor Hassan obtained his PhD in finance from the University of Houston. He also completed his MBA from a Baylor University, Texas, and Bachelor in Commerce from Dhaka University. He has also in um, management development program from Harvard University. Professor Hassan has more than 40 published articles in reported business and editorial uh, business and economics journals. Uh, he served in various administrative capacities that include Associate Provost, Roosevelt University, Associate Dean, and Director of the MBA program, and Founding Executive Director of Finance Honors Program at the College of Business at the same university. Honorable Vice Chancellor Tanvir Hassan. His Excellency Dr. A.K. Abdul Momin MP, Honorable Foreign Minister of People's Republic of Bangladesh. His Excellency Mr. Earl Miller, the U.S. Ambassador to Bangladesh. Honorable Special Convoy to the Climate Vulnerable Forum and Formal Principal Secretary at the Prime Minister's Office, Mr. Abul Kalam Azad. Honorable Chairman of ESTCDT, Architect Nilufar Zafrullah respected faculty, senior man management, and honored guests. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, namaskar, and a very good morning to you all. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our wonderful campus. I'm especially happy to welcome those of you who have worked your entire careers in the diplomatic, governance, and foreign services because your presence with us today 
serves to highlight one of my most important mandates for IUB, to create a truly international university. United Nations Day is an annu annual commemorative day reflecting the official creation of the United Nations on October 24, 1945. In 1947, the United Nations General Assembly declared October 24, the anniversary of the Charter of United Nations as the day which shall be devoted to making known to the people of the world, the aims and achievements of the United Nations and to gaining their support for its work. That was, of course, 70 years ago. <coughs> the objectives of the UN mission, always so important to the stability, security, and the democracy of the world, it has taken a turn towards much more essential goals, which form the thrust of our discussion today. I recently came back to Bangladesh after spending 34 years in the United States to take over as the vice chancellor of IUB with specific goals. We need to work hard to bring diversity to our campus through curriculum and other tools to help our students to be globally conscious citizens. We are actively planning to establish meaningful exchange programs, both for students and faculty with other countries. We are trying to foster the understanding of the Millennium Development Goals among our young students. And also, I have also already initiated a process where we are estimating our carbon footprint within the campus and taking active steps to reduce that footprint. IUB is transforming. This year alone, we have received research grants from multilateral agencies among, amounting to three plus million dollars in the last eight months. We also received 4.8 crore taka in personal donations in the last eight months for our students and for the programs that we offer. And more pledges are on the way. We witnessed the largest ever student enrollment at IUB's history in the last two consecutive semesters since I took over the helm. I feel encouraged to see the rising enrollment numbers for girls and women at IUB. As a result, we are trying to be more gender inclusive in all campus activities and making sure that they have an adequate representation and voice in all the relevant forums on campus. Based on the inputs we received from the students, from the female students, I have already hired a national award-winning martial arts coach and a yoga instructor. We are also hiring a basketball coach to establish the first ever female basketball team in Bangladesh at the university level. I'm looking forward to hearing from the content experts and the distinguished guests on in today's sessions and hope that our IUB students and faculty will have important takeaways from this event to shape their thought process. Thank you and good luck. Okay. Distinguished guest, there are some changes in our schedule. As you said, we had another change. Our honorable guest speaker, our chief guest, our honorable guest speaker of today's event, Mr. Abul Kalam Azad, has also an important event to join with the Prime Minister. So we are this, uh, we'll request him to give his speech now. So now it's going to be Mr. Abul Kalam Azad, Special Envoy of the Climate Partnership Forum, former Principal Secretary of the Prime Minister Office and former Chief Coordinator for Sustainable Development Goals. Sir, is your turn now.
So, Honorable Chair, Chief Guest, guests on the podium, and uh, dear participants, faculty and students, good morning. So, it's my uh, great pleasure to be here today, especially on the, uh, this uh, event day. It's like the exam paper is uh, almost over, but so many difficult questions need to be answered, but time is up. This was said yesterday by the COP presidency chair, Alok Sharma. Even Secretary General, for today's uh, event day, building back better for peace and prosperity, building back together for peace and prosperity. Why uh, Alok Sharma was, is telling that uh, time is up? Last IPCC report mentioned yeah. that the globe, which were supposed to be placed in 2050, now IPCC report predicts that this will be in 2030. So obviously, time is up uh, earlier than the schedule. Not that three hours exam period, you will have the 180 minutes, but less than that. So we need to act very fast. At this backdrop, I will mention two issues, performance of Bangladesh in SDG implementation for peace and prosperity, and also what we are going for in COP26 at the end of this month, or rather the beginning of November. Bangladesh, shown its remarkable progress in SDG implementation. The number one country in SDG progress, not in total SDG implementation because some countries started so uh, much ahead from us. So the first moving implementation in SDG by Bangladesh, along with two other country. So why Honorable Prime Minister were they awarded in the last month uh, as the SD, best SDG implementer? <clears throat> why Bangladesh became uh, first? Because of these two, three policy decisions. It was a political commitment of Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. In 2015, when she signed the SDG document, specifically mentioned that we will implement SDG as we did MDG. And from the very beginning, she took the commandership of implementation of SDG. Policy decision is the localization of SDG. You know that um, the basic point of SDG is leaving no one behind. So the people at the farthest part of the room or the back of the session or the most deprived section of the people need to be addressed first. In Bangladesh, our prime minister took this challenge with so many social safety nets and also disseminating the SDG issues from capital down towards the villages. Another beauty of SDG implementation in Bangladesh is 39 plus one. What is this 39 plus one? We all know that 169 targets are in SDG, but Bangladesh thought that all the SDG targets are not necessary for us. And at the same time, we will not be able to give equal priority to all these 169. So, we identified 39 issues, which are most important, like 
education, health, maternal mortality, under five mortality, all this. So these 39 Bangladesh government took much more emphasis on this. The last one was the whole of the society approach. Government, academia, private sector, journalists, development partner, international organizations, all. Hearing all sectors of people, implement, uh, involving all of them together. So these three, four policy decisions made us able to the first in the globe. Now about the climate change. As I mentioned that 2050 comes to 2030. Now, how do we act? Last year, this year we saw flood in Germany, in China, heat waves all over the globe. In Siberia, smokes are there. Unimaginable. But we need to combat 1.5 degrees Celsius. In Paris Agreement, 2015, all these countries of the globe, about 200, 193 probably, agreed to have this 1.5 degree. But last year, in December, when all the countries were asked to have their enhanced national um, determined contribution, that how much you will contribute in terms of carbon, the result is not satisfactory, rather very bad. With this NDC, we will not achieve even two degree. That will be more than two degree. Presently, we have 1.2 degree from the pre-industrial level. So we see how worst is the situation. Last year in Bangladesh, we faced five floods, one cyclone Amphan. So the propensity and the magnitude of climate change events will be in our country and also all over the globe. The ray of hope is USA came back to Paris Agreement. So this made a huge change, getting the better result in COP26. We from Climate Vulnerable Forum, a forum of 48 countries, which is going to be more than 60 countries after a month. We had our regional meetings in LAC region, Africa, Caribbean, Pacific, and Asia. So we prepared a document, Dhaka Glasgow Declaration, where we want to emphasize a few issues. I will take very brief, a very short time to uh, identify these issues. Number one, we want to tell that, yes, the countries will review their NDC in each five year, but this is not enough because 2050 is happening in 2030. So you need to review your NDC each year, not after five years, because every moment, any moment we are causing some very uh, bad steps for deteriorating the climate. This may give impetus. This may make urgency <coughs> in all the countries that we need to work very positive for taking the climate in our favor. Next one, we were telling about the $100 billion. This $100 billion in 2015, all the developed countries, they committed that each year, at least $100 billion they will contribute for climate adaptation, mitigation, and all this. But unfortunately, till 2020, it did not reach 100. One of the year, it reached about 80, but most of the year, 50, 60. So we need to call on that urgently the developed country need to make a compact so that each year they contribute at least $100 billion. And not only that, in this COP, we need to raise our voice that there should be some monitor, some monitoring system 
maybe imf maybe some other organization maybe um, the climate change agents of the globe that how much is being contributed by the developed country and where is it loan is it grant what is the rate of interest of the loan is it affordable for the uh, vulnerable countries we need to look into this the most important part is 1.5 degree climate vulnerable forum set a barometer in last december that how much each country declared and what would be the effect of this declaration implementation but as i mentioned earlier the result is very bad so putting much more pressure on the emitting countries that you need to reduce your emission so many good declarations in the meantime usa doubled their contribution some of the country had very good projection for reducing carbon we find in media that in this cop26 russia and china they will not be joining the president will not be joining their delegation will be there some people thinks that it shows their less commitment they are one of the bigger emitter in carbon we hope that our prediction will be wrong we hope that cop will be cop 26 will be very much successful in terms of commitment of carbon emission this vulnerable country gathered together to raise their voice so that the whole globe especially the developed country commit for future better future we understand that this event in iub excellent sir i pay my sincere thanks to all of you that you have uh, arranged this event day and um, obviously on event day we are discussing on climate and also prosperity development and all this i will conclude by saying uh, another dimension of agriculture you see about 811 million people goes go to bed hungry about 300 million people are much more malnourished 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 another 3 billion people they don't have their healthy diet this is the global situation so we need to enhance agriculture production the easy answer a difficult is there when you want to increase your agriculture production much more methane emission is there agriculture livestock these emits huge quantity of methane produces huge quantity of ammonia which is much more which brings much more devastating effect than carbon so you need to have the right balance we need to look into how much food we waste how much uh, food grains are being wasted when we uh, harvest them just a few weeks back we have an event on this i believe the comprehensive program on agriculture and food distribution is needed to end hunger we need to have the prosperity utilizing the same resources doing more with less we need to find out that way so in our country we have one system in agriculture which we call uh, alternate wet and dry method 1 kg of rice takes 300 3000 liters of water 1 kg of rice 3000 kilo liter of water so we need to reduce water consumption it is said that 70% of the uh, say drinkable water are being utilized for agriculture 
So we need to look into there also. So not only one issue, we need to have the holistic approach. Let us have the better future for our children. Uh, our dean of the um, uh, faculty and uh, uh, Professor uh, Hussein was telling about the uh, polythene free premises. I work for scouts. I'm the president of Bangladesh Scouts. We have 2 million. So we declared in all activities of scouts, there will be no polythene. Maybe university can declare. So uh, using polythene here, you cannot turn it. Uh, using polythene here. Uh, so let us try uh, practicing practicing ourselves that we will not use polythene in any of the work. Some people then have their business card with a layer of polythene. So this paper, this will not be destroyed. If we put on the street, it will go in the drain and it will choke the drain. So we need to look into all this. I would urge Excellency Vice Chancellor <laughs> that you can call on your students that uh, their family life, and in the university, they will not use so that may contribute better so for the better future for them. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, the, bad thing. the globe at present using more resources than it is. So, from where do you get this? Yeah. This is the yeah. report of the wow. NDP last year. So we borrow yeah. it from yeah. future. Commonly, uh, scientists used to say that we borrow this world from our children. Consume more, we produce. And you see, a farmer who uses his seeds as full grain. What are not masters not long in future for for the cultivation? No, we cannot. So this is going to happen for us. So we need to consume less. So why in his digit we are just told sustainable consumption and production, not that sustainable production and consumption. Consumption comes first. So we need to have less consumption. With these words, I pay my sincere thanks for inviting me in this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, honorable guest speaker, Mr. Abul Kalamazad, for your key speech and setting the tone of today's session. Um, as you said, uh, we, in between the program we had with us His Excellency Mr. R. Miller, Honorable Ambassador of the United States of America. So now, may I request Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Tanvir Hassan, to formally welcome uh, Honorable Ambassador R. Miller by giving the flower bucket. Thank you. Thank you. And His Excellency Mr. Miller, welcome again to the Independent University of Bangladesh. Distinguished guest, as we said, our honorable chief guest of today's session is Excellency Dr. A.K. Abdul Momin, MP, Foreign Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bangladesh, couldn't join us today uh, due to some emergency reasons. But he's, he was kind enough, he's kind enough to send us his speech. So now we listen his recorded space. Before that, I want to uh, briefly introduce him. His Excellency Dr. A.K. Abul Momen MP is a, has a PhD in economics and MBA in business administration from the Northeastern University and MPA in public administration, public policy and international economics from the Harvard University. He was ba the Bangladesh permanent representative to the UN from August 2009 to November 2015. Dr. Momen published and presented more than 250 papers in different fields. So now we will listen 
the recorded speech from His Excellency Dr. A.K. Abdul Momin, MP, Honorable Foreign Minister of Bangladesh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Professor Imtia Zussain, Ambassador Tariq Karim, distinguished faculty members and guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, my students, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Thank you for your kind invitation. I'm glad to know that the Global Studies and Governance Program of the Independent University of Bangladesh has organized this celebration of the fifth Global Day in conjunction with the UN Day. I appreciate this year's theme, Sustainable Environmental Development, a very timely topic when the world is facing a climate uh, emergency. Dear students, you may be aware that though being one of the least emitters, Bangladesh is the seventh most vulnerable country to climate change. And we are one of the global forerunners in the fight against climate change. Being the current chair of the CVF, a forum of 48 climatic vulnerable countries, Bangladesh is leading by setting examples on climate actions, in particular on adaptation. You would be happy to know that to battle climate change, we have already submitted and updated an ambitious NDC scrapped plans of 10 new coal-based power plants worth investment of $12 billion and are running one of the world's most extensive domestic solar energy programs, although it is costly. Our sacrifice is enormous. Moreover, we'll be implementing the Mujib Climate Prosperity Plan to pursue strategic low carbon investment frameworks integrated into national development plans for capturing our growth and prosperity. Also, we have already formulated the National Adaptation Plan. Distinguished uh, uh, participants, we are proud to be the first LDC to have a comprehensive climate strategy program. And we also established a climate adaptation fund titled Bangladesh Climate Change Trust Fund as early as 2009. We have allocated $480 million from our own resources to this special fund so far. After the adoption of SDGs in 2015, Bangladesh government has engaged all its ministries and divisions in conjunction with international organizations, NGOs, and civil society to achieve sustainable development, ensuring environmental sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, as the president of the Climate Vulnerable Forum, we have raised the issue to save this planet Earth. We have asked the industrialized countries to de develop and design indices aggressively so that the global temperature remains at 1.5 degree centigrade. We also asked them that they should meet their commitment that they made in 2015 to and must come up with 100 billion US dollar yearly for next few years. Third, we want them to help us to have renewable energy. Ladies and gentlemen, we, when we talk about sustainable development, we talk about peace, which is one of the keys to sustainable development. Our father of the nation once said, peace is imperative for development. Without peace, no country can prosper. From very inception, Bangladesh has been the harbinger of peace, following the foreign policy dictum of father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and I quote, friendship to all, malice towards none. We peacefully resolve our problems, for example, land boundary, water sharing, and maritime boundary with our neighbor, the largest, biggest neighbor, India, following the international rules and laws. 
we also successfully uh, successfully resolved our maritime boundary with our neighbor uh, Myanmar. Our success in securing new maritime areas not only open up the opportunity for blue economy, but also tax us with responsibility to protect the marine lives and environment. We have already updated our Maritime Jones Act. It includes all the regulations of the UN clause and is implementing agreements to conserve and ensure sustainable use of seas. Dear students, it is well noted around the world that Bangladesh government has taken robust and exemplary policies to ensure sustainability. At this forum, I want to call every citizen to participate in implementing our policies and initiatives towards sustainability. Especially, I request our young friend to come forward to bolster our initiative and realize the future we want where no one is left behind. My dear friends, we must, we must save this planet Earth for future generations. Thank you all. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangla Bandhu. We like to thanks again our chief guest, His Excellency Dr. A. K. Abdul Momen MP, for giving us the recorded video for this program. Our distinguished presence, as we said, we have another video message one of our distinguished guests couldn't make today's program. Uh, so now we listen uh, the recorded video from Professor Salimul Haq, uh, who is the director for ICAD and also Professor Independent University Bangladesh. Uh, Professor Salimul Haq uh, is also an expert in adaptation and climate change in the most vulnerable and developing countries. He has published hundreds of scientific as well as popular articles and was recognized as one of the top 20 global influencers of climate change policy in 2019. So now we'll taste his recorded video. Hello, my name is Salim al -Haq. I'm the director of the International Center for Climate Change and Development at the Independent University of Bangladesh. I'm currently in the United Kingdom, uh, where I'll be attending COP26 in Glasgow in a few days time, uh, and therefore not able to be with you, although my colleague, uh, Deputy Director, Professor Misan Khan, I hope is, is with you now. Uh, I'm going to say a few words on behalf of my center. Uh, firstly, to uh, congratulate Professor Imtiaz on organizing this uh, UN Day event uh, together with my center and the Bay of Bengal Center. It's a great pleasure to collaborate with our colleagues in the Independent University of Bangladesh. Um, our work is primarily on climate change, but climate change now is such a big issue that it covers everything and therefore development in the climate change era is climate change development. We cannot uh, separate the two anymore. And so for a developing country like Bangladesh, dealing with climate change is as much an issue of development as it is of climate uh, uh, as specific activities. And this is true, not just for the uh, Bangladesh, but for every country in the world, including the richest countries, including the United States of America, who are now seeing impacts of climate change happen there as well. So this is a global problem, which Bangladesh is facing first and harder than many other countries, but it therefore is also not just a challenge but an opportunity for Bangladesh to lead the way in tackling the problem, finding solutions to the problem, and indeed then sharing those solutions with the rest of the world. And uh, as you may know, currently the Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh share, chairs the group of uh, vulnerable countries, nearly 50 of them under the uh, group called the Climate Vulnerable Forum. She will be representing them in Glasgow in a few days time, and will be also uh, being the chair for a two year period that will enable Bangladesh to share its knowledge south-south with other developing countries, but also south-north with developed countries. And we are very happy to continue this discussion out of today's discussion on how we can collaborate going forward. I hope you have a very good meeting and I look forward to the results afterwards. Thank you. We'd like to thanks again, Professor Salimul Haq for sending us the video though he couldn't make the program today. Distinguished presence, now we listen from our today's guest speaker, His Excellency, Mr. R. Mirror, 
Ambassador of the United States of Bangladesh. Before I request His Excellency the Ambassador to come, I'd like to briefly introduce R. Miller was sworn in U.S. Ambassador to the People's Republic of Bangladesh on November 13, 2018. Ambassador Miller served as U.S. Ambassador to the Republic of Botswana from 2014 to 2018. Ambassador Miller, a career member of the U.S. Senior Foreign Service, joined the Department of State in 1987. He served as U.S. Consul General in Johannesburg, South Africa, and at U.S. Embassies in India, Iraq, Indonesia, Malaysia, and El Salvador. Ambassador Miller is a graduate of the University of Michigan and a former U.S. Marine Corps officer. He is the recipient of numerous U.S. government honors, including the Department of State's Awards for Heroism and the Federal Bureau of Investigation Shield of Bravery. Ambassador Miller speaks French, Spanish, and Indonesian. So now, may I request His Excellency, Mr. R. Miller, Ambassador of the United States to Bangladesh. Thank you. I love your green pen. And Charlena, you have to get a picture with uh, the fellow wearing the, the maple leaf there. <laughs> I got it. Um, well, His Excellency, Dr. A.K. Abdul Momin, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Hassan, distinguished faculty of the Independent University in Bangladesh, honored guests. You know, there's a wonderful saying I used to use in Sub Saharan Africa. When there are far too many distinguished guests to recognize properly and individually, and that's simply all protocols observed. So, assalamu alaikum and namaskar. Thank you for the kind invitation. A special thanks to Professor Hussein for organizing today's session on governing nature. And of course, a discussion on one of the most pressing issues of our time, which is climate change. As you've heard, the climate crisis is reshaping our physical world with climate changing faster than any point in modern history. Extreme weather events are becoming more frequent and more severe. The scientific evidence is clear. Human activity has directly contributed to climate change. We are already experiencing around the world, not simply in, in Bangladesh, which is in many ways is ground zero for climate change, the devastating impacts of this crisis on every aspect of our lives, from food to water insecurity, to the effect on infrastructure and public health. It exacerbates inequality and impacts economic security. And sadly, we have likely reached a point where some of these changes may not be able to be reversed. So as we prepare for COP26 in Glasgow, less than two weeks away, the latest report for the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is a stark reminder we have to work together to avoid even worse impacts than what we are already seeing today. Because if we continue at our current rate, temperatures will continue to rise, water levels will rise, resulting in increasing catastrophic flooding. I don't need to tell anyone in this room who lives in Bangladesh about the effects of flooding. Wildfires, extreme weather, and destruction of species. President Biden says these findings represent a code red for humanity. Global temperatures have risen nearly 1.1 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and threatened to hit 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius, which would be catastrophic. The late summer Arctic sea appears to be the lowest in the last 1,000 years. Sea level rise has accelerated and is happening faster than we have seen in the last 3,000 years. The ocean warmed faster over the last century than it has in the last 11,000 years. And the concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide reached its highest level in 2 million years. The United States is committed to lead and engage the global efforts to address the climate crisis. We are committed to a pledge to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 50 to 52% in 2030. So COP26 in less than two weeks marks the most important multilateral climate change conference since governments met and agreed to the Paris Agreement in 2015. President Biden, Secretary Clinton, Special Presidential Envoy for Climate Kerry, who was in Bangladesh not too long ago, more than 10 cabinet secretaries and senior administration officials and more than 50 members of Congress will be in Glasgow to show the whole of government approach to the United States 
is taking to tackle the climate crisis. And of course, no single nation can solve the crisis alone. And the United States is working with other countries to lower their own emissions and improve their resilience while assisting, while assisting those countries already suffering most directly now from climate change. I mean, one of the lessons that we have learned anew from the COVID-19 pandemic is how truly interdependent we all are on this vulnerable planet that we are so privileged to share and protect. President Biden reconvened the major economies forum on energy and climate to urge leadership in the major economies to commit to faster climate action in this critical decade. And President Biden said again last week, the time to act is narrowing to the point of no return. So the United States would like to commend the Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, for representing the Climate Vulnerable Forum at the Major Economies Forum and delivering a strong message, emphasizing the significant climate change impacts vulnerable countries face and the importance of moving, as she said, from climate vulnerability to climate resilience to climate prosperity. Bangladesh, as the chair of the CVF, has the opportunity to share its hard-earned knowledge. The world needs to hear and to learn from you. Many countries facing the greatest risk from climate change have done the least to cause it. I believe Bangladesh's carbon emissions are below 0.5 uh, degrees percent of global emissions. And so I, I've seen firsthand over the past three years the pressures you face from climate-driven internal migration and displacement. So the United States is committed to working with Bangladesh to build resilience, to protect communities from the impacts of climate change, because of course you're on the front lines today, but every nation will be on the front lines tomorrow and they must recognize that. At his leaders summit on climate in April, 2021, President Biden announced the United States intends to double US support for developing countries and triple the finance for climate adaptation efforts by 2024. And at the UN General Assembly, President Biden announced his intent to work with Congress to further increase the United States international climate financing, including an increase in adaptation support to fully sixfold from its peak under President Obama. As the pace of climate change accelerates, so too must our urgency to act. That's why it's so important that we have forums like this. Someone talked about rays of hope. You're the rays of hope, right? And um, the same urgency you feel is shared certainly on uh, university and college campuses in the United States. And I see it every time, every time I visit. More than ever before, science and technology are making that possible, providing, proving while the climate change is great, so too is our capacity, your capacity to solve it. The coupling between breakthroughs from scientific innovation and accelerating cost reductions through deployment and wind and solar power, battery storage, and next generation renewable energy sources can lead to a prosperous net zero carbon economy by 2050. So as President Biden said, this is a moral imperative, an economic imperative, a moment of peril, but also an, a moment of extraordinary possibility. The climate crisis is here. This is not a challenge for future generations, but one we have to address and confront today. But not only is tackling the climate crisis a imperative to, to solve this threat, but it's also one of the greatest economic opportunities of our time, allowing us to create new jobs and new industries, delivering greater benefit for all. If all countries come to Glasgow, prepared to do their part, COP26 can be a turning point that sets the world on the right course. As I said again, climate change, like the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, like many of the global challenges that we face, just reminds us that we have to work together to solve these together, that these issues respect no borders, no country boundaries, no high station. We're in this together. And while this is the issue that is for this generation to solve, it certainly affects the generations of the, the young faces I'm, I'm seeing out in the audience and, and your children. And we have to work together to, to resolve it. I have great optimism for what, what uh, will hopefully happen in Glasgow in two weeks, and I hope you share that optimism. Thank you.
Thank you very much, His Excellency, Star Miller, Honorable Ambassador of the United States to Bangladesh for setting the tone for next two sessions, urging for combined action and decisions to save the world in terms of climate change and other uh, common issues. Now we'll have both of thanks for this session. And for that one, I am requesting Professor Dr. Tayyub Rahman, Dean, School of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, Independent University, Bangladesh. Dr. Tayyub Rahman is Professor of Development Studies and Dean, School of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences at IUB. He had been the chair of the Department of Development Studies at Dhaka University from 2006 to 2009. He also served as Associate Professor and Chair of Public Administration at the Kazakhstan Institute of Economics Management and Statistics Research. He has extensively published on issues related to governance and parliament. Now it is your turn, sir. Thank you. Uh, respected guests, speakers, honorable vice chancellor, pro vice chancellor, my colleagues, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. A very good day to you all. On behalf of Independent University Bangladesh, I would like to express our gratitude to you all for your kind present in this August gathering. I thank you all for your valuable presence and contribution to make this seminar a vibrant and productive one. We take this opportunity to thank His Excellency Dr. A.K. Abdul Momen, MP, Honorable Foreign Minister, People's Republic of Bangladesh, for agreeing to be the chief guest of this event and delivering his speech. Um, our gratitude goes to His Excellency Mr. Earl Miller, Honorable US Ambassador to Bangladesh for his time and contribution for records. We also would like to acknowledge our gratitude to our respected speakers, Professor Miza Khan, Professor Selimul Haq, and Mr. Abul Kalamazad, Special Envoy of Climate Vulnerable Forum and former, uh, former Chief Coordinator of SDZ for their thought-provoking space. I would also like to thank Professor Tanvir Hassan, Honorable Vice Chancellor IUB, Mrs. Nilofar Zafarullah, Chairperson ESTCDT, and Professor Niaz Ahmed Khan, Pro Vice Chancellor IUB, for their guidance and encouragement. Last but not the least, we acknowledge the dedication, professionalism, and hard work of Professor Intiaz Hussain of Global Studies Program, Ambassador Tareke Korim, Director Center for Bay of Bengal Studies, and Professor Selimul Hawk, Director ICAT, for their and their team for organizing this day-long seminar. Congratulations. Thanks also goes to the support staff of IUB, uh, my colleagues and, and the participants here. We, we wish that the United Nations will live up to the expectation of billions of people across the world to lead and establish peace and harmony among the people and play an important role in ensuring sustainable development of nation based on the values of equity, peace, respect, and humanity. Let not uh, the unlimited growth prevail over SDG. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you very much, Honorable Dean, School of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, Independent University. Distinguished guests, with this, we are going to close today's first session that is governing nature. We'll have our second session from 1.30 p.m. in this same room. But before that, now we are going to have our lunch break. And I'm requesting all of you to go for lunch in the faculty lounge, room number 4044. Room number 4044.
please. Can you just make sure on Croatia.com? 